Hello guys, welcome to another episode of this Mercedes Sprinter van conversion. Today's video is just going to be a little short video. I just want to run through with you the heating ductwork on the Truma boiler that we've got installed in our van. In the last Truma video I showed you how to install the heater. You can have a look at that video, I'll put a link up here. But we didn't install any of the ventilation or ductwork in the van. So what I want to run through is where I've run the ductwork to, the fittings that you'll need, and the reasons why I've put the vents where I've put them. So let's have a quick look at the materials that we're going to be using. On the bench in front of us here, I've got a selection of fittings that we're going to need to install the ventilation duct in for our Truma heater. I've got some little louvered grills, which will be for the outlets that we'll place at various positions within the van. These come with a backing collar. What that does is that screws onto that grill and then that sandwiches it either side of a piece of furniture board and then you connect your ductwork onto the back of this collar. In addition to that we've got some T's to obviously split the hose to distribute to a different area of the van. There are some little outlets that have a little damper in them as well so that you can vary the volume of flow out of the heater. I'm going to use one of these particular vents in the shower cubicle because I want to be able to regulate the amount of heat that we put into the shower. I've got a white one as well actually, they do them in different colours so it will match the white PVC. I'll show you that one, we've already installed it in the van. I've also got some 90 degree elbows and a selection of wall brackets. To distribute the warm air to various parts of the van, we're going to be using this flexible duct in. It's foil lined on the inside, and it's like a brown sort of cardboard finish on the outside, and it's very flexible. So we'll be able to mould that around to all the different places in the van. And then you'll notice on these fittings, they've got like these little barbed teeth in here. So all you need to do with the corrugations on the flexible tubing is to push this in and you can hear it clicking past all of those teeth and that's enough to hold that quite securely. If you did want to be sort of belt and braces you just could pop a little screw in this little square hole here but there's really no need, I mean that's in there quite tight now. I've run some of the ductwork already so let's jump back into the van and I'll show you what I've already done. So here's the Truma boiler installed underneath our bench seat and here are the two ventilation ducts coming off the left hand side of the boiler. They go through the side panel of the bench seat, you notice there's our drop out vent. And then they come round this gap here, now I'm going to box all of this in. But this first duct is going to turn and I'm going to have a vent between the two seats blowing into the cab because the cab area of the van by far has got the most heat loss with all that single glazing. So it's really important to put a vent into the cab and keep that area warm, otherwise it's just gonna suck all of the heat out of your van. I've actually taken the top connection and put that into the cab area because Truma do say that the two top outlets are slightly warmer than the two bottom outlets. So what I've done is I've run the top outlets to where they're needed the most, or the coldest areas of the van. So the top outlet on the left hand side goes to the cab, and the top outlet on the right hand side goes right the way through to the back garage and those rear doors. Because I know those doors don't fit perfectly, there's going to be a few little drafts and leaks, so that's going to be another cold area of our van. So I've run that ductwork right the way through there. Also, the hotter ducts want to be the longer runs, because then obviously by the time it gets there, if you've lost any heat in the ductwork, it'll be at a similar temperature to the shorter runs. And then when we come round to the living portion of the van, obviously that top duct is going to go through that gap in the seats into the cab. And then this bottom duct, I'm going to put a T-piece here with a vent facing forwards into the living area. And I'm going to continue it along to the doorway, have an elbow here and another vent which is basically going to blow across the face of the doorway. And what that's going to act like, again, if this door seal isn't fantastic and we get a few little draughts, this will act like a warm air curtain rising up the face of that door. And it will also help to keep any cold draughts away and it will also help with any condensation possibly that might form on that side window. 
because you'll notice in your house that most of your radiators are positioned underneath windows and that's because you normally get a cold draft falling down off of the cold glass so the radiator's there to give you a warm up draft to combat any of those cold down drafts. And obviously the heat's positioned at the place where it's needed the most. This door could potentially be quite cold so I'm going to have an outlet here. The cab's obviously going to be another cold area so we've got an outlet pointing into that. So you're really treating all of the cold areas and then the rest of the van will look after itself. So here down the side of the toilet we can see that white vent that I was talking about. This is one that's got the little damper in it. So you can sort of partially close off this vent or open it. And then they've got a collar on the opposite side in where the bench seat is. And this is just going to provide some nice warm air to our shower. So the combination of warm air coming into the shower at low level here and the extract running at high level, we can actually use the shower as a drying room. We can hang wet clothes up in here and in no time at all they'll be nice and dry. So here is the other side of that vent in the shower cubicle. We've just got to connect some flexible ductwork now from this collar onto the connection onto the boiler. This was a pipe that we already had running through the bottom of the shower which goes through to the garage. You'll see that in the previous installation of the shower build. We ran that ductwork right the way through to the back so that's already in. And then we've just got to connect this duct onto this bottom connection down here. just put together this step to go in front of the passenger seat at the cab end. I've just taken some three quarter inch plywood, just cut it with some simple butt joints and then I've used pocket holes to screw it together and then I'm just going to use pocket holes to screw it to the floor of the van. We've got a bit of Zebrano on the front edge and then we've cut our heater vents in here so as well as being a step for the seat it's also going to conceal all the ventilation ducting for the heating system is going to run through here and connect onto these grills. The reason we've got this step here is twofold. One, when the passenger seat is swiveled round like this, the height from the top of the seat to the floor is 600mm, which is too long to sit at comfortably. Your legs are dangling over the end and they're not touching the floor. So this step just raises the floor a little bit so when you're sitting here you've got something comfortable to rest your feet on and the end of the seat is not touching the back of your knees. As well as that it's just convenient for me to run the ventilation ductwork through here and get a couple of vents pointing out into the main living space. With the top portion of this step I've got to cut round all of these different profiles so there's a number of little curves and steps there and this plastic moulding that we've got to get round. So I've taken a scrap of cardboard and with my scribe and a square and a pencil I've just marked these various transition points with the square and the scribe and then I've just cut this out with a sharp blade and then that should fit perfectly around that profile. And then what we can do is we can put this on top of our bit of wood, trace around that with a pencil, and then cut it out with a jigsaw. I've just screwed this 18 millimeter plywood top to that box section frame that we made up, just with some inch and a half drywall screws. And then I've sprayed trim fix adhesive over the top of the step and I've also sprayed trim fix adhesive onto the back of the piece of outro that we've got to go on here. So I'm just going to put that on now. <laughs> Just to finish
finish that step off we put a bit of stair nosing on the front of it to match the stair nosing by the side sliding door so that all sort of ties the whole thing in together appearance wise we've got those two vents in the front and then we come round to the bench seat and this is where the main return air goes back into the boiler I've just brought this new attachment from a drill it's a right angled chuck so basically what it allows you to do in confined spaces where you can't get the length of the drill in you can place this in the chuck and then you can put the drill in a much smaller confined space and it will work in any angle so I've got to drill some holes in this tight space here for the bracket for our new table so this is perfect to get in here at this end of the van I've also got the last of the heating ducts what I'm going to do with this fixed end panel is I'm going to drill a hole in this top corner I'm going to bring it through this fixed end panel and then I'm going to have this bend here with a vent that's going to be within the confines of the rear doors and what that's going to do is that's going to blow warm air across the back inside face of the doors where the bedroom is it's going to be a cold area because there could be some gaps in these door rubbers and there could be a few drafts so to save the bedroom getting cold I'm going to heat this area where the back doors are there's about a four inch gap between the end of the bed and the doors and then that'll give us a nice warm air curtain rising up the back doors and that'll kill any cold drafts. We cut the hole and just brought the corrugated ventilation duct through. I'm going to cut it about an inch shy of the hole, fit the bend on there and then you can concertina this stuff up. I'm going to push it back into the hole and just leave the bend exposed here. So there's the finished vent. I've used one of the Truma elbows I've screwed it to the ductwork and I've also screwed the vent onto this elbow so it's nice and secure and then that's now going to blow a warm air curtain across the back of the inside of the rear doors and that warm air is going to then just rise up into the bedroom and it's just going to stop all those cold drafts that we would have had before. So there's the rear door in the shut position you can see that's where that vent now comes in so there's plenty of room there in between the back of the rear doors and the bed that's just going to make sure that that void is nice and warm. So there we go guys, that's all the heating ductwork run in the van. It's important to run your heat into the areas where it's needed most. You know yourself when you're driving along and it's cold and wet outside and your windows start fogging up with condensation on the inside. The first thing you do is turn the heating and the ventilation on to blow warm dry air to get rid of that condensation. And it works the same way when you're trying to heat your van. If you want to keep that condensation and that away from your windows, you need to put the heat in where it's needed the most. And then the rest of the van will look after itself. If you've heated all those cold areas, the inside of the van's going to be nice and toasty. We've enclosed the back of the van here now. We've only got a couple of weeks to our ferry to take us over to France. And I've got a couple more build videos just to release before we go off on the ferry. I've got the video of the solar panels to release. I've got the video of the control panel and the batteries to release and then I've also built this little LPG cupboard here where we've got our cylinder and the regulator and it's all completely sealed with a dropout vent in the bottom and I've got a little build video on that to release as well. So there's a couple of videos that will be coming out in the next couple of days so please do make sure that you're subscribed, hit the little bell notification and then as soon as I release those videos you'll get an email notification. Please do leave me a comment below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. We're really looking forward to get away now on this trip and I hope you can come along with us. Thanks very much for watching guys. Cheers.